Hi, I'm Keisha Bisram. And I'm Hanji Chow. And you're listening to the Every Shade Podcast. Season two. Hanji Chow. Wow. Keisha Bisram. You got a haircut. I'm eating. Sorry. I did. (laughs) This was like two, three weeks ago. Whenever last time we spoke was. But I'm eating at the moment, so... I'm like snacking. I'm like grazing on a little brioche bun with like pancetta and cream cheese. Oh, that looks so good. That looks good. And you look so handsome with that haircut. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I really I like it. it because it was really long. I mean, it's like whatever now. But um, it looks like I just rolled out of bed, which I kind of did. But um, I've seen you with like haircuts yeah. in the past. And I feel like this is like the nicest one, the way it's shaped. Really? No, this is like, oh, no, this is, this is like a little cowlick here. So oh, okay. Well, I can't see that side. Um, I'm seeing your good side then. <laughs> no, no. No. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that cowlick hair. When I had short hair, I hated that having, like, getting the first cut. And oh, like, yeah. Oh, my God. I remember you having short hair. Oh, and it was crazy. People are forgetting mm. that I had short hair. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, it was. Re- yes. It you was very weird. And I, was I don't like, know which I prefer, actually. Memories fading. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I have had a few compliments of other friends and families saying that, like, my short hair was nice. But I do have to say, having long hair feels so powerful. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. If I, don't I, see that. I don't know if it's different between men and women, but like as a woman, I'm just like, ooh, like this is this is sexy. Like I, I mm-hmm. I'm thinking this, you know. But well, when my hair is like not as long as it was three weeks ago, but like longer than this, mm-hmm. like it's a thing. You definitely do feel like sexy and kind of bangable. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently, that's like a um. Oh my god, it's like a th- I remember hearing it through. Is it through like Roman history or like Greek mythology? Something, something along the lines of that. There, there is like a there is a saying that um, the reason why men had long hair during those times was because it was actually a, a, a sign of power. Right, like Samson and Delilah, or Samson. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mouthful of bread. <laughs> Samson. Yes. The that story of Samson and his his he drew power from his hair and Delilah like cut his hair off. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the story I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't remember mm-hmm. where it was from. Yeah, yeah, and his hair was cut and like he, that's like, from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it wasn't <laughs> not some <laughs> Roman <laughs> myth. Not some yeah, not some <laughs> Roman myth. That's from the Bible. Listen, I don't know my God. Teacher okay. getting schooled by the Asian. <laughs> um. No, but uh, did you ever? I mean, you, you must have seen Fleabag, right? What is it? Fleabag. No, no. It's Phoebe. Oh my God! It's on Amazon Prime. Phoebe Waller Bridge is really, really good. Mm-hmm. But there's this. I, I can't quote it, but there's this one scene where her sister gets a really like terrible haircut. Like it's terrible. And so she marches to the salon with the sister and like has this launches this tirade on the hairdresser about how like a, a woman's hair is like a th- is, is, su- is such a powerful thing for the is, is, yeah so she goes and she goes in on this on the hairdresser it's really great but yes that <laughs> thing. I want to watch that because I, you know, I've. Um, I'm surprised you haven't seen it. It's a really good series. I've heard, I've heard of yeah, no, I've heard of it. I just yeah, I just never never seen it. Um, I I've been going through. I mean, I showed you that that one photo of you, me, and Nikki, mm-hmm. and um, I've been going through a lot of my photos because I want to like start organizing them and like creating like little scrapbooks. And there's a whole era of me with short hair. I mean, I've had it for nine years. And looking back at that time and looking at those photos, it's interesting because when I first got my hair cut, I got, I got it a month before I turned 21. And I thought like I was being like edgy and cool and different and like um, bold. And realistically, like deep down inside, I mean, this is going on like at a very deep level <laughs> on this oh, podcast. Like, I, 
I was actually a very insecure person and Mm -hmm. I did not embrace who I was like as a person or, or, or a woman or Keisha, you know? I, so it's like looking back at those photos, I'm like, I felt like I cut my hair off out of shame. Oh, interesting. And it made me sad because like, now that my hair is growing longer, like I've had, I have had not had this for nine years. Like I don't, I can't remember what it was like to have hair and I'm having it now. And I'm like, I feel so much more confident and sexy and like I'm embracing myself. I love it. But like, I never had this feeling before. I mean, like, when you say you cut it out of shame, out of shame for your hair back then, or was it more, or, or do you think it was not out of shame, but you wanted to sort of like figure, to, to discover another part of yourself maybe? No, it, I, I, think I, I think on the outside, I thought that that's what it was, but mm-hmm. inside I, I was hiding from mm-hmm. my own self. Which is really sad to think about, but like I think l- looking at that, I can see that girl like just hiding, like I'm gonna cut this all off. Like I, I, mm. I feel like I'm showing off, but I'm not. I'm actually like hiding from okay. who I really am or who I want to be, which is mm. sad. <laughs> it's very it yeah. Sad. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Hair, hair has a lot of power. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually like we've been talking for weeks and I just totally forgot that you had short hair <laughs> you know it's funny like you're you're not the only one like oh, oh my god now you pointed out like, oh fuck yeah you did have short hair like yeah, for a like, while. You're forgetting, yeah. Yeah. when I first knew you you had short hair yeah I'm forgetting too there are times where I'm like oh shit like I had short hair like two years ago <laughs> hmm. when I think of a memory but yeah oh. yeah so how does it feel being fully vaccinated um i feel like normal <laughs> nothing different um that's good did you have any side effects yes so i had for my second shot i had um the first day i felt just tired but i also went out the night before so i only had like five hours of sleep so i wasn't sure if if it was due to the night or because of the vaccine. So I was just mm. tired. And then I ended up falling asleep, I took a Tylenol PM, woke up the next day. I felt completely fine the next day. The next morning I went for a jog. I went to run errands. But as I was running errands, at the end of it, it was like around like 2 p.m. I, my body started to feel like, I, I felt the chills. Mm-hmm. that's when I knew I'm like oh I need to get home and even though when I was driving I was like oh my god I because you were like oh my god COVID's hitting <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as I came home I just laid in bed for the rest of the day I did absolutely nothing. okay I think I watched oh. Shrek because I just well, I, I mean something why to not yeah, I, I mean you had that. COVID for the afternoon you might as well <laughs> yeah, yeah right um and then after that the next day I was completely fine Oh, God. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone's getting different reactions, but, like, it is a vaccine. Like, there's... I, it's so interesting to me, the dialogue that's around the, the, the COVID vaccine, well, Moderna, Moderna and Pfizer and J&J. It's, like, it's not... This is not, like, a special pill or, like, a magic wand to change things. Like, it's just a vaccine. And it's I mean, a, if it's only that was the case... If only it was a magic pill or like a magic wand that can just, you know, that can just make it go away because then maybe someone would invent a magic pill or a magic wand to make stupidity go away. But here we are. (laughs) I had a friend that I spoke to a while ago. I can't remember who who said it. It's like last month that I spoke to her. um, And she said to me, oh, this is not going to stop COVID. And I mm. was like, well, yeah, it's a vaccine. Like, it's not, it doesn't stop anything. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, you know, like, it's, it's, I mean, eventually we're going to become immune to it. And eventually, like, it's, it, the, the whole purpose of it is to slow it down. But whoever said it was going to stop it, like, that. That's right. Like, but that's then again, happen. like, I think this week there was a report about how it's, how we're not, or, or how the US at least is not going to reach herd immunity ever. So yeah. it's, it's going to be there. Um, yeah. Thanks to, thanks to, you know, people refusing to get the vaccine. I don't know. I, I don't know. 
I, my, my cousin, he's a scientist, um, but like his career is working in labs. And he told me that his biggest pet peeve is, are people who aren't scientists who act like they're scientists. And I'm no scientist. Like I'm not, I think even with the research that I read, so there's some things that are lost to me, but it's like, mm. dude, like people have to listen to scientists. Like it's exactly. not, not tricking you <laughs> anything. And if they are, like you, you would know. <laughs> right, right. And, yeah. also, and it's interesting to me, like I'm not, I don't want to advocate for like, oh, you have to get the vaccine or like, I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, what's the word, like pressure people into thinking or saying anything. Mm. My thing is like, listen, like if you can eat fast food every week of your life, and mm. you could drink soda, and if you could not exercise and not drink water, like you could take the mm. fucking vaccine. Like it's like, I yeah. don't. Those things are probably so much more worse to your body mm. than taking the vaccine. Let's be real here. Like you're pumping, you're pumping McDonald's into your bloodstream. Mm. Oh, but those chicken nuggets are so good, though. Okay, but do you know what's in that? <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten a day, but it's like, yeah, think about like what's in that meat. Like, it was processed in there, and then like the sugar intake, your soda intake. You're not even moving your body. You're not even sleeping well. You're not even drinking water. It's like you think that's fine, like compared to taking a shot. Like that's that's a, that's right. that mindset. I I can't really wrap my head around. Mm-hmm. Unless you are that person that's like super healthy and you know whatever, and like you feel like you don't need it, I don't know. But oh, God, even then, those people. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you think about like a lot of Americans who don't want to take the vaccine, and it's just like I'm pretty sure your standard diet is killing you already, anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's not going to kill you. It's going to be your the way you live life. Like, mm. uh, sorry, I can go <laughs> off. Or, or maybe COVID will just add to that and you'll just die one one, one way or the other. You'll die from one of yeah. those causes. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and, well, I'm glad you got... I was, was going to say, there are people who are like, who are holding off on the vaccine because they want to wait to see what happens. And I feel like that's that's okay. But like, if you want to hold off in case you got like surgery or if you're like waiting to get pregnant. I know like there's... Right. Like, those things. Or like, or I'm just going to hold off while the millions of other people who have already taken it like see what see what effects they've had uh, that yeah. that's such a that i yeah when 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 i hear that that's like oh it's weird because it's like what we gotta like take go it away. for you damn right, <laughs> right. anyway sorry um, you're gonna say something I, I cut you off no i was gonna say but i'm glad you're uh you're 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 fully vaxxed thanks i hope the whole world gets it soon too oh god i know like i mean I know. like like what's I happening mean, in India and everything. With, with India, yeah, exactly. That's kind of wild. I mean, not kind of wild. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen any of the um, the news reporting on it? Not lately. I've only been getting um, stories from a friend of mine who lives in Delhi right now. And also, oh, really? my dad actually has clients who has family in India. And they've been sending him, uh, like news or like videos from their families from india mm. have they been directly? affected as well what's up have they been directly affected and or like got COVID? it's like a, it's a mix like some either has or they haven't they're safe but like their town is not doing well and like he'll send me videos and like it's disturbing i don't want to watch them but it's yeah you know, they're really, really disturbing. I mean, yeah, like yeah. I was watching some of the coverage on the on CNN this week, and um, and like they got they went really dark, um, and yeah, and some of the coverage was really jarring. I think the thing with, I mean, this is going to be. I, I'm not going to get too into this because I feel like this topic is so deeply layered, but. You know, India already has a lot of issues within the country, within the government. Mm. You know, I mean, they've had the British affect their their history, like, many, many years Mm. ago. They're, like, having to re-identify themselves and their government. They Mm. have a high population. The caste system still exists. You know, whether people want to agree to that or not, it still exists. Mm. And, um, you know, they have a large population that's not even... Uh, documented. I mean, I know a lot of countries, including the U.S., has that too. Mm. You know, Mm. India has that with a larger 
uh, amount of people and you know the, the politics between the caste system is, is a hot mess i mean like there's so and like also it's a country where people are moving around a lot and also the people you know there are people who are so far more privileged than others i mean they're they're like a lot of families in india like they they live together under one roof mm. there's generations mm. of families living under one roof so they can't they can't isolate you know they mm. can't where are they gonna go um it's so congested and on top of that people can't not not work you know like they have to work mm. <laughs> in order to feed their mm. families i mean there's just so many layers to it no definitely Definitely. And Modi, like, like, you know, his, the way he's handling, you know, it's just, there's just, there's, it's not, I, it's interesting because I feel like, I think a situation like that, there's always, I think there's a need to point to just one issue, but I think there's just so many issues mm -hmm. before COVID even hit that, like, it just, it's just collapse. I don't know. I, I don't want to use the word collapsing because I know they will get through it eventually over time, hopefully. but yeah it's just a mess mm. you know mm. I mean, the u.s went through that too i mean like we have a lot of issues too when COVID happened it's like it just attacked like every area because we're not organized, yeah. you know but yeah i don't know it's sad mm -hmm. it's really heartbreaking mm. i don't know what to say about the whole situation it's just so heartbreaking and the fact that there's so there's such a large population like mm. i think that's another thing that like I, that has to wrap around our minds is a population that large is really hard to navigate through. Mm. It's a lot of people. No, that's right. You no. Know? Uh, yeah. It makes me sad. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, so it should because it's a sad situation. Yeah. But, like, what uh, can you do? Like, you know, we're right. sitting here and it's like, what can we do? Like, I don't know mm. as a US citizen, like, yeah, I got my vaccine, great. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, and mm. I think that, I mean, that goes for any, like any issue that has happened around the world. It's like, what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. But um, anyway, moving away <laughs> from that, because that was a little bit of a downer. My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, so this week our assignment was to watch two movies, two films, of yeah. which I only watched one because the other one Angie technical was slacker. difficulty. Just <laughs> was, uh, yeah, no, I totally slacked. I was slack my homework, which is terrible, and I <laughs> stupidly <laughs> left it to the very last minute. It's just like my that's like my high school life in a nutshell, just leaving homework to the last minute. Um, <laughs> Stupidly left it to the last minute, and I was gonna watch it before the before we uh, we talked today, and and I couldn't. They just wouldn't let me. They just wouldn't let me um, play it, and so that was really bummed out. Um, turns out it was nothing to do with me at all. Um, not but that have, I'm shifting. Have you been watching on anything from Hulu recently? Like, oh my God, Handmaid's Tale. Okay, so, so you were able to, you have been able to. I was it. able to, like this week, yeah. And it was yeah. just like, I think literally like the 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 service like just went down today. Um, mm -hmm. And they were working, working on it. Got but, it. Um, got it, got it. But speaking of which, have you seen Handmaid's Tale? No, I actually haven't. None of it? It's just crazy because I've read the book like 10 times in my life. Like it's like mm. one of my favorites. And I know it's different than the book, but I didn't. I think the first season is from the book though isn't it yeah I, from what i've heard um the only reason why i never watched it is because i haven't had a hulu subscription for a while oh i see and then obviously in the past like year and a half i just can't watch anything <laughs> oh <laughs> yes anything too dark like i i yeah. like I, I think i told you this last time like i i have only recently just mustered the the um the energy to to, to watch something that's not comedic <laughs> yeah. and the thing is i i really want to watch it because i do the, the book is like one of my favorites and i do love mm. that topic and i also love the main mm. actress um elizabeth moss oh my god she's one of my absolute favorites and she's incredible 
I have, I, I, I know I'm, I'm so dedicated to her. So like, I know I have she to really her. is that's, that's insane. Cool. And, and yeah. in this, and in this latest series, she makes her um, directing debut as well. And it's, Oh my yeah. God, it's so good, oh God, but know. definitely watch all of it. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's so dark and so like, um, relevant oh. <laughs> to, to, to the past four years. Um, yeah. and now, um, but it's, it's, it's wonderful. Anyway, so yes, so I watched that as well. But, um, um, yes, so we were supposed to watch two movies. The first one was uh, Always Be My Maybe. Okay. And um, the second one was Another Round. Which, so. You didn't get to see Another Round. <laughs> you didn't get to see Another Round. I'll have to see it. I'll, I will have to watch it because that, because I, so annoyingly that came up um uh a couple of, it, it was on my watch list a few weeks ago um but then i ended up watching nomadland instead oh which my is god so good did you yes. watch that i watched it like two oh months ago god. wait hold up before always be my maybe and before another round we have to talk about that film for a second <laughs> yes no no absolutely please <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i so i didn't know um so by the way i also love that actress too she's frances mcdormand yeah she's she's someone that i aspire to be when it comes to like her craft of acting like that oh my god me is is acting like i don't care about the glamour and the glitz like or, or what or, like, she she's oh my god i'm like I don't she's love amazing words. she's so amazing i just i love i just love the way she um you know, portrays her her work on camera. It's just she's mm. incredible. But yeah, I didn't know. I heard of the film, but I didn't know what it was going to be about until mm. my cousin and I watched it like two months ago when I was in Vegas. And um, I love films that touch upon people who are, are not um, what's the word? Like they're not heroes. They're not. They're yeah, not they're like, sort of like glamorized, um, right? They're almost forgotten. Right. So so that was how I felt as well. Cause I was because I was about to watch it and I, and I read like the brief synopsis and I was like, oh, okay, this sounds like a you know, as as mean as it sounds. I was like, this sounds a little bit mon- on the mundane side. Mm-hmm. Nah, but let's see because you know Francis McDormand and like the the the, the cover art picture they had looked really interesting, <laughs> and I was like, let's just watch it. And oh my god, like yes, like the whole movie just focuses on people who are like not not usually within our um, I guess n- people who 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 like you said you sort of like forget about. Um, and um yeah it was beautiful yeah yeah it really was beautiful to see like the relationships between people and also Mm -hmm. these people they're not you know they're not homeless they also don't have homes and right i mean she even says at one point she's like she she she's not homeless she's i can't remember what the exact line was but she said she's not homeless but she just doesn't have a home yeah and um, the relationships they had with, you know, supporting one another always, but mm-hmm. also being on the brink of like, they're just, they're trying to survive. Yeah. Um, I was really saddened by the fact that like she, cause I, I, I couldn't, well, I mean, I, I watched it two months ago, so maybe I can't remember too much of it, but I felt really sad that she couldn't really move forward from her husband. I know. Oh my god. The end when she goes back to the house. Yeah. And I do I do appreciate the fact that they didn't romanticize the ending where she chose the other guy who was like, oh my god, also charming, so cute. Um, you know, he had such a stable life with his family and like they were so Mm. loving and caring and like she Mm. ended up not choosing that. She just chose like she was so dedicated to her husband and to that life. Mm. So it was almost like Mm. she was stuck in time, sort of, and just living this new life. And not really moving forward um mm. which was interesting and sad but also you know it's i think that to me is the reality of like human nature sometimes yeah but uh, what also struck me as well was that um uh was that she was working as a temp for amazon 
And uh, and that just that whole thing, I was like, wow, that's kind of crazy. That that's just it, it was just it was it was yeah, it was a little like um, you know, this whole thing about how they're not being paid like well enough, or yeah. Um, so I was like, wow, this, okay, this is, I guess this is kind of truthful as well, because, you know, she's, she's working as a temp for Amazon and she's living in a, in a truck. Yeah. Uh, in the campsite. But that happens with a lot of people. I mean, it's not just like, I know Amazon gets the target of, mm. of, um, underpaying their workers and, you know, overworking them. But if you think about it, like a lot of companies, retailers yeah. or like factories, like they all mm-hmm. get it. Mm. You know, like, um, I was actually talking to my mom the other day about um, uh, just job openings in general in the mm. U.S. And she was like, well, yeah, isn't there a demand for people to work as truck drivers? And I said to her, I said, well, yeah, but you need to think about the lifestyle of a truck driver. Like, they're on the road for, like, 15 hours a day. And they have to stay awake and like they have to get to their destination and like a lot of them you know, they end up doing drugs because they have to stay awake on the road God, the staying awake part would no? it would be so hard for me because like i would fall asleep behind the wheel <laughs> yeah like people get tunnel vision and like they get ill and like they get sick and yeah. the, it affects their mental you know health and their emotional and their physical health like everything and mm. you know like these people are not being taken care of and yet they're being exploited and it's just like it happens mm all around the country and Mm -hmm. you know their lives aren't it's it's not attainable to have like even just a good life that was see when you say good life that that was what i was also kind of drawn to in the movie because she she just had like a very simple life Mm -hmm. right and like she you know like 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 the scenes where where she was in the laundromat, like doing the laundry and like playing, like doing a puzzle, like, God, that seems so simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, of course yeah. it's, it's, it's tough, but it, yeah, and she, but she all, all her like worldly possessions was just in that one truck. Uh, yeah that seems like a very easy that seems like a a not not to downplay it but that seems like a simpler life that we could maybe even have (laughs) well it's interesting because it there is a balance of beauty but also um you know just disdain because there's moments where she you we saw like so much beautiful scenery and mm, I watched it with mm. my cousin and when we were watching it, I'm like, oh my God, like, can you imagine just, that's just the life that you live. Like you're, you're, you're seeing the beautiful scenery of all of like yeah. North America. However, yeah. when her car had car issues, like she couldn't pay. Oh God, that was, that was, yes, that was brutal. Yeah. Like, and yeah. she was like sleeping in the, in like, like freezing temperatures. I was like, yeah. fuck. That so is rough. It, it, it's, there's like that weird. No, kind of absolutely. Like, yeah. Like very night and day, right? Like it's like yes, yeah. it's beautiful. Yes, it's mm. simple. Like yes, it's stress mm. free because you don't have to deal with like house issues. Mm. Or, like, you know, it's like you don't have to deal mm. with all these things, and you don't really mm. need all the money because you have a community, you have people supporting you, you have someone giving mm. you coffee um, in your mm. community. Like everyone's looking. You're like, also you're very friend. alone. Yeah, and, the, and like you're yeah. you're lonely. You're in the cold. Like you mm. can't pay for repairs. It's like. Yeah, it was really yeah, it was really and oh, it was so tough. And 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 that and one of her, you know, community friends and moving to Alaska or like dri- driving up to Alaska and, and then the end where she like died and they'll have this like memorial for her. It was gorgeous. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we just accidentally just talked about no man. <laughs> Maybe this will just be the episode. Nomadland. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that was a really gorgeous film. But back on track. <laughs> Always be my maybe. Oh my goodness. So I have to say about this film, mm-hmm. it took me two days to watch it. It was, sorry? It took me two days to watch it. Oh, how come? Because, and I'm not, I'm not going to shit on the film, by the way. Um, I want to put it out there that Always be my maybe is a great 
rom-com. Everyone in the world needs to watch it. It was so comforting uh. to see. <laughs> it was so comforting to see a, a, a cast with like mainly Asian Americans and Asians. Like I loved that so much. Um, I love Ali Wong and Randall Park. I want to marry both of them. <laughs> My dream, yes. even though they're both like I think married to other people. But anyways, um, and um, it was a very sweet film. I personally don't like rom coms. Mm-hmm. And that's why it was, that's the only reason why it was hard for me to push through because that's just a, a personal taste of mine. Like rom-coms is very low genre on my list. <laughs> right. Like I think the only rom-com that I like is, I don't know if you want to count Shrek as a rom-com. And also, No, definitely not a rom-com. Okay. And it also like When Harry Met Sally. Okay. Which is similar to like always be my maybe because they're they're best friends and they they right. have and they have issues but mm-hmm. um yeah this was a great film though like it was I, a really really good film I've only heard great things about always be my maybe um the reason why I don't like rom coms so much is because I I can't get past like the cheesiness and the cheesy lines oh. and like the cheesy humor but honestly this film even they they had those cheesy parts but it was actually like funny and enjoyable to watch yeah like it wasn't annoying you know sometimes like yeah someone says a line you're like Ugh, like I know it, yeah it wasn't like it wasn't cringy at all no it was really it was really really funny and um, I do have to say the last half hour of the film I was like crying a lot. I know. It started oh with, and I'm probably jumping around a lot too, but like it started when Sasha's parents said they paid for their full meal. Oh, really? Oh, that was like, uh, okay. Because it, that... like, it, it reminds me of my family. Like th- her parents reminded me of like my parents. Like when the father uh-huh. was felt sad for the fact that like she didn't have a ride to the airport. That's something my dad would my my dad would say like. <laughs> That's funny. They said, like oh like we went like you know we didn't tell you but we we paid for our full meals like that is the sweetest thing like. Oh. Like, I don't know if like white people will understand, <laughs> but like I can understand like why that's so sentimental you know. Mm-hmm. And then from mm-hmm. there on like I was a broken mess. It was. Oh yeah no the end the ending ending was I was like oh uh, that was so freaking sweet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, no. really, I really love, because I think, you know, growing up, we've watched rom-coms, and it's always, you know, white people, mm-hmm. white cast, like, I'm just gonna be direct mm. and honest about that, Um, it's always a white cast, and I feel like seeing elements of a traditional rom-com in this film with fully, with mainly an uh, Asian American cast was really nice to see because of like the cultural references just kind of tied in with that um you know it it made me appreciate the film too because I'm like oh this is something not only different but like we can see people from a different background like in the same element it's just love you know like they're experiencing the same thing that everyone experiences and it's um it's just uh we're, not, we're just not seeing a white face. <laughs> no, for sure. You know? I mean, what was, I, I, yeah, like Randall Park and Ali Wong, that pairing was so, so great. And, I love Randall Park. And also, you know, who I've, I really part. loved Michelle Buteau in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Played the best friend. Oh my God, she was hilarious. She's great. <laughs> Have you seen her stand up on Netflix, by the way? No, I haven't. I do watch, actually have to watch that. Watch I do have to watch that. But Ali Wong's st- uh, Netflix special or two Netflix mm-hmm. specials yeah. have me in stitches. She's amazing. Like, yeah. So, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what it is I like about her? And I guess Randall Park too. I think all of, all three of them actually that you mentioned it. Because I've seen her, um, I've seen her uh, stand up as well. They're just so authentic. Mm. <laughs> you know like they're not putting on a face or a show or an act. like they're just so like even yeah. Alex Wong's like stand-up like I think the reason why I loved it so much is because she was just so direct and authentic and I'm like this is yeah what we need. yeah like this is this is what we need to see for sure and, and the fact that she did it while she was pregnant I was like yes. this is <laughs> <laughs> She starts off like, I, I probably have to pee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Dude, if she could do a stand-up pregnant, what do we have excuses for? I know, right? But also, but but what I I I loved how she was like recounting how she tried to trap her husband and yeah. ended up being trapped herself. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I, I love her oh. sarcasm about like feminism. I yes, it's so like, wonderful. Like no, ladies, like we want to stay home. Like don't tell them the secret. But the, the irony in that is like it actually is fem- that that is feminism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But no, the the the, the movie was just you know the the. The beginning, the first few minutes, <laughs> there was actually, I, 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 there was a scene in the very first, in the beginning where you know when she's a little girl and she's like making her own dinner and everything, mm-hmm. right? The I got brain. really excited at a scene because <laughs> this is so stupid, but like the dinner plate that she was using is the one is one that I. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! That's my dinner plate. Um, <laughs> it was really, really <laughs> dumb. <laughs> uh, it was really. I got, I got weirdly excited by that. Um, and um, and yeah, and like she was, you know, she was eating spam, which is, which, like I ate spam when, when I was young as well, and yeah. it's really good when you just like fry it. Have you ever had it? Yeah. Oh yeah. When you fry it, I. It's funny. I can't. I cannot. Spam is so disgusting to me, but if I have it with like just rice, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, a bit of like soy sauce and stuff, it's it, I can eat it. Yeah. It's, weird. it's really no, I love it. Like I <laughs> love it. Or like in Korean food, it's like it's just the weird. I think it's the only time I can eat it. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Oh my god, I love the smell of spam. I love the smell of it. It's so good. It's like that <laughs> saltiness to it. Mm. Yeah, it's it, you mentioning that though. It's like I think even as a brown person watching this film there were some little moments that they had that I don't know I I felt like I could relate to it so much more than any other Mm -hmm. rom-com that I've ever seen like I felt like Mm -hmm. like oh I am these people too Mm -hmm. you know like the moments when she's like cutting food with like scissors or like (laughs) wait do you cut food with scissors uh, like chicken, like you know, like meat. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm 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 very <laughs> white, and I use a white knife. I mean, <laughs> mainly knives. Trinidadians use knives, but it's like yeah, we've used scissors before to like cut. Like we have like oh. a, in our in our household, um, we have like one pair of scissors that's only meant for me. <sighs> and it's like my mom would call it the chicken scissors, you know, and like yeah, like that's just what you chicken use. Chicken scissors. For. Interesting. It's I don't think for, like, I don't think my mom has that. I don't think so. I mean, we do have a pair of kitchen scissors, but I'm not sure we use it to cut chicken. Yeah. But um, it's like little, little thing, like little moments like that. It was just mm. like, yeah, like that's that's what you know. That's just how like I don't know. It's like these people are you know from a different background, but like like I said before, they're experiencing the same thing. So it, it just made me feel like I can have. They're not. I don't like watching. I think watching rom coms growing up as a kid, like in the nineties because they were all white cast like they, they just felt very different like these are people on screen mm. i'm entertained by them it's funny it's cute i could watch it over and over again but watching always be my maybe i i felt it's almost like i felt like what they were feeling like i mm-hmm. like, like i know these people and mm-hmm. i think that's why i enjoy the film so much because just like mm. you said like the plate <laughs> right you know you recognize but also people. like the mother dying. I was like, why does the why does the mother always have to die? You know, as soon as that happened, I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> I was like, why does she have to die? Seriously. <laughs> I'm so mad. I didn't even get sad. I just got mad. I'm like, god damn it. I was like, fuck's sake. The mother always goes first. Yeah. yeah. It That's reminded uh... me of like when I first saw up. I thought it was gonna be like a Oh my awesome. god, yeah. yes, that big first ten minutes of up. Always gets me. Like what the fuck? I saw it in theaters with my cousin, and I'm like, oh, like you know, watching this film. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, like, what there. the fuck? You're just traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> ten minutes in, I'm just like, why do I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. having mental? It's like, <laughs> are we in the right movie? Like, what is going on right now? This is not fun. I'm not having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Because cause they, they really like, because Up really like pulls in your heartstrings. Like the music goes, and you see him sitting on the chair by himself, and yeah. she's not there, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah so like when when she when the mother dies and always be my baby like i just got i just got angry because i'm like now i'm triggered now i'm emotional <laughs> This woman but, told but I really, uh, I, 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 I cried, <laughs> like, Pete crying was, was at the very end when she, like, reveals, like, this restaurant that was inspired yeah. by the mother, yeah. and then the painting of the three of them on the wall, I yeah. was like, oh my god, okay, that's done it. <laughs> I, I was continuously crying, like, tears were just flowing. Yeah, I was like, I want to eat there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like. I I also I I appreciate the element of um of her catering to white people and mm. him challenging that and saying like no like authenticity like is is where it's at like mm. this is what it's truly what it truly is. I also tying in with that, I also really liked because I know that they both wrote the film along with someone else. Mm. I liked that they they didn't allow her to change to the point where she had to change her whole career and stuff because it made me think about like i don't know i think like watching movies in the 90s like the woman always had to like give up herself in order to like be with the guy right right, right. yeah I, have you seen have you watched friends as in like the tv series yeah, the tv series yeah yeah <laughs> you remember the ending like how it how it fully ended Yes, because well, yes, because Rachel was on the plane and she comes off the plane to which I hated. I hated that so mm. much. So basically, for I mean, this is a spoiler alert for friends. <laughs> um, it's old enough. If you haven't seen it, too fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like come on, nineties. Um, <laughs> and you should watch it. It's a great sitcom. But right. Rachel, problematic at times now. But yes, carry on. <laughs> but Rachel had like a great opportunity to work in. Mm. France for her dream career yeah and instead of going she like left and left that opportunity just so she could be with Ross mm. and like I know they had a kid together so like to have their kids together but like I'm like I remember seeing that even as a kid I was just like no like why would you what actually that? happened to the kid they so I think she, the, the the child was supposed to go was supposed to go to France with Rachel. Uh huh. And the whole setup was that Ross would, because he had a kid too, so he would go to France and like spend time with like uh, Rachel's daughter, or their daughter. And or their daughter, right? They would go back and forth. I think that was a plan. I can't really. But at, but at that point in the move in the in in, in this in the episode, where was the kid? <laughs> oh, none of the children were there. Even like even I think. Monica and Chandler's children weren't there. Like, right. Was, so I'm like, so was Rachel gonna get on the plane without Emma? <laughs> I think. Oh my god, I can't remember. I think the the child was like with the mother for the for the time being. They had a plan. I remember they they did have a plan. I don't think she was because she was on the plane when she picks up the. Fu- I don't think Emma was showing no, 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 an no. episode at all. No, no, no. Emma was with her mother. I think, if I if I recall correctly. Because the whole the whole purpose was for Rachel to go first and to just you know. wait. But isn't Rachel Emma's mother? No, no, no. Rachel's mother. So like the grandmother. <laughs> oh, I see. I was like, <laughs> <"Wait>, what? <laughs> um, but, oh, okay. Yeah. I can't remember the details, but like moving I forward, see. I guess what I'm trying to say is like <laughs> the the female is always the one to like have yes. to make the sacrifices. And I, I, mm-hmm. I was a little afraid that the, the film was going to be with, you know, Sasha's going to like change and like go over career. And I'm like, they can't mm. do that. They can't do that. Right. But she didn't. Like she ended up just expanding. And like he ended up expanding too, which was something that I thought was incredible for both characters. Because for sure. I always feel like a lot of like romantic film, I mean, obviously it's changing, but like what we grew up <laughs> in, it's a lot of romantic films. Like they always have people making sacrifices and it's like no 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 no. it should be about people expanding like making the sacrifice to expand mm. not to like mm. not to just go back and 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 the fact that she spent so much money on all the merch oh my god i know that room full of merch i was like wow oh like, that is that is a gesture yeah that's what that's 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 love yeah you're so it's interesting i don't know if I don't know if they meant to do this, but like the acts of love mm. were all, we're just all there. Mm. You know, like the service, yeah. like every, they, all of it was just there. Oh my God. Ugh. 
I love them so much. And also, I do have to say that, like, I just love, I love that, I mean, both Ali Wong and Rachel Park, they're obviously talented actors, but I think for a film like this, it was so, it was also very refreshing to see two actors that weren't your typical glammed up Hollywood Mm. sort of actors like falling in love Mm. they were just too average too what what was it they were just average yeah yeah it's like they were just too average like people that Mm. you know telling the story and like that's something to me and also like you know they were they were they're they're good actors like they don't have to be the most glammed up good looking monolesque actors to be in in front of camera like they're just average people who can convey this art and it was just so beautiful to like see that Mm. more refreshing to see that you know um which by the way speaking of hollywood actors can we talk about the scene with keanu reeves (laughs) oh my god that was i died i was floored i had no idea he was actually in this film Really? I had okay. no idea. Because um, I didn't really look up this film too much, you know. I just knew mm. that Ali Wong and Randall Park were in it. And it was, it was so ridiculously absurd. That whole thing is so absurd. They're just so fucking out there. Like, Keanu Reeves is so out there. And so um, and Randall Park's um, character, the, the girlfriend, Jenny, like, mm-hmm. she's so fucking out there as well. It's like, it's like how? <laughs> and at one point where... Where um, uh, Sasha says, um, "Yeah, how do you even cultivate like dreadlocks for an Asian?" Like, so, like yeah. <laughs> but yes, the, the 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 people they were with were just so extreme, like yeah. uh, out there. But yes, Keanu Reeves. Go. <laughs> well, actually, uh, just adding to what you just said, it, I think the interesting thing about that is that we don't realize how ridiculous our exes are. <laughs> yeah you know like even though she went out with Keanu Reeves and even though he was like you know it, with this woman who was spiritually and like spiritual and just you know zen and all this stuff but it's like no like our exes are insane <laughs> like, they're insane you know and they, they yeah I mean e- even both. even her even her fiance in the beginning where, where she's like yeah. so we can be apart together oh my god Ooh. Dale, and, and then she was, like justifying postponing the wedding and we were just like what is going on right now i have a huge celebrity crush on daniel dakin since okay lost, interesting that's an interesting lost, okay. oh my god no you don't understand since lost I, I i was huge on lost when it came out and when he was on lost i was like who is this guy <laughs> Such a good actor and like just he does have jaw he does have a really good jawline I know, but his, like, I, I think, I think what drew me to him was, um, I didn't know who he was when I saw Lost, and hmm. when he, um, when they were giving him more scenes, um, he was just so phenomenal, I'm like, this guy is something, who is he, anyways, I'm, hmm. I'm going off on a tangent here, yeah, no, he was terrible too, so, like, their exes were just terrible, and I feel like, yeah, that's also, even though they just kind of blew up how terrible they were, but in reality, if you think about who we end up being with or who we end up falling in love with, who's the right person for us, the people before that person, if you, you look back on like your track record, it's like, no, 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 they were, they were fucking insane. They were fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But then also they could say the same about, they could say the same about you. Oh, totally. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I was insane and crazy to like people as an ex yeah no me too (laughs) (laughs) Um, but then again i also know i'm crazy so Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so to keanu and and uh what's her what's the um the girlfriend's name i forgot jenny yeah jenny like they probably weren't crazy for each other like they were just they were they were kind of on the same wavelength so yeah they're both the um, people amount of crazy. No, I love that. I love that they had Keanu Reeves in the film because, and I also love that they didn't. The like key, he, he ended up being like a terrible person, yeah. which was fantastic. The whole scene with the when they were dining together. Oh my god, that was so insane! It was so insane, but it's also kind of truthful. Like, ugh, like I've 
I've had this experience once in my life. I remember I had a, um, I have a girlfriend. She, she's back in Korea now, but she was living in uh, New York. Her and I, she got like this sort of um, uh, voucher to, to dine at a like five-star restaurant that was opening up. And we went and we're both like huge foodies. And I remember we went to this restaurant. I can't remember what the name of the restaurant is, but we ordered, I remember our first dish. It was like a small portion like this. Oh no, what's the rest of it? Which by the way, I don't mind small portions. I don't mind it. However, what I don't like is when you serve it in a massive plate. <laughs> so it looks smaller than it really and she is. Looked at it, and she looked at it and she was like, I feel like I'm eating out of a toilet bowl. <laughs> And I was like, and I, cause I get it. Like, I don't mind, like I said, like, I don't mind small portions if it's good quality, but like, don't, why, why are you serving it in a fucking massive plate? Yeah, it's just a waste of plate, really. I think in like one third of the plate. It's like this big. I mean, Ugh. the podcast won't see my hands doing this, but like, but it's like a, a tennis size ball of, size. Yeah, think of a size of a tennis ball compared to like, like a sombrero. <laughs> you know? Right. Why yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of, what was it though? So our, our first, um, our appetizer, we had soup. And then okay. our second course, I really don't remember what our second course was. Was the soup in like, just like a table, like an, on a soup spoon and that was it? <laughs> it might as well have been. Um, it was like the size of a tennis ball. And like, <laughs> and also the second course, it was, I remember having a meat dish. She had a pasta dish. It was the same thing. It was like a small, tiny portion and like this massive, massive, massive plate. And the dessert was also the same thing. The dessert, honestly, was probably the best part of the meal. Like, we actually enjoyed it. but Because it was also dessert-sized? <laughs> probably, you know. Yeah. But the food didn't taste well at all. And I can't, I can't remember if the, I, and I remember her, her and I, we always make fun of this memory of ours. But we were like, did the food just taste bad? Or was it just a bad experience and the food just tasted mm. bad? <laughs> Wait, so with those kinds of things like is the food supposed to fill you up or is it just supposed to be just like taste good i mean i i think it's supposed to taste good and don't like honestly i i i've been at five-star restaurants where the food actually did taste good but i think when the presentation is so absurd mm. i think it to me is just distracting right I, I love dining at really good restaurants too. Like I'm, I'm the type yeah. of person where like, I don't mind eating at places that's a hole in the wall and I don't mind eating at places that's fine dining. Uh -huh. yeah. However, when it's just so absurd mm. or like even the mm. service is just absurd and the person's like talking as if like what you're going to eat is probably the most immense experience of your life. Like chill, little, chill. Tell me what's <laughs> Tell me what it is, but like just yeah. take it down a notch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And if like the physical presentation is just so absurd, like that whole tennis ball to mm. rare ratio of a plate and food, like mm. it's to me that that's a little ridiculous. Like that's just too much. No, um, absolutely. I I don't know how I would deal because I I I mean I love like good tasting food, but I also like food to like fill me up. Yeah, yeah. So that tennis ball size portion is going to be problematic because right afterwards, going to a dollar, going to a dollar pizza. <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Like, I think of like the restaurant, like um, like one of my favorite restaurants in the city is Bouvet. Um, oh my god, yes, but that's like a decent size though. And that's a decent, like that's a decent size. Yeah, it's like small but like not large, but like but their food always tastes great. Right. Like, it's yeah. Like, the flavors of like even just yeah. the, you know just the slice of bread with egg and ham it's like it just tastes so mm. good oh my god it's really good but then you know you know buvet similar to the restaurant that i was working at that you that you um yeah. let me know about yeah. um but after having worked there and having gone to buvet i was like oh my god what the fuck where am i working right now because like like the portions are like good yeah. But the quality mm, and it's gone has gone so far downhill since you know we were there. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm not gonna name the place of it, but but recent because one of my good friends still works there. One good work friend still works there, and 
and we're good friends anyway. But um, the guy that I know, the yoga teacher, no, right? No. Okay. Yeah. But he was there at one point. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Patrick. Yeah. Patrick. Um, no, oh, but yeah. yeah, no, but so one of my other work friends, who's a really good friend of mine, works there still, and doing you know the during this past year, you know, obviously, um things haven't been great for restaurants in the city but um he texted me he sent me this photo of um a bag of coffee okay and um and we have you know at the at that cafe you have you have like the full-on espresso machine and everything it was great um and we would normally use um, coffee beans that we grind next to the machine and does the whole thing itself. So he sends me this picture of a coffee, um, a bag of coffee, mm-hmm. but the bag of coffee, the brand, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts Espresso. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. No, it was Dunkin' Donuts Espresso. Sorry for dropping a curse, but like, holy, cr- what? Yeah. And they were using, and it wasn't even like beans. It was the fucking espresso, like actual espresso powder, um, coffee powder. And they were using it to make the coffees through the espresso machine and selling each cup, if I remember right, each cup is somewhere between like, I think each, like a regular latte is like three or four bucks. (laughs) Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You know, I hate to sound bougie, but like when I taste bad coffee, I'm disgusted. And like Dunkin' Donuts is disgusting to me. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it is know. terrible coffee. So what I'm saying, like you know, you know, you know when quality is good when you taste when you take that one bite and you're like, oh, this shit is banging. Like I can just be good with satisfied with like five six bites and I'm good. And yeah. I think I think that's like kind of like reverting back to that scene because like I've I've like I said like I've been to like you know um five-star restaurants where like when you take that first bite you know Mm. and you know if it's good or not and if the presentation is like so absurd it makes it even more absurd there's something angering about it oh it's just like how dare you like what's more important the presentation or the food itself like I like food Mm. it looks pretty too like don't get me wrong you know like I love that Mm. you know why but it's just a waste of plate. Don't, 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 right? yeah, don't, don't, just... don't do that. <laughs> yeah. It's and, just a waste of plate. Like you, someone's gonna wash that. Yeah. <laughs> and also like I don't mean to I'm I'm, I'm like I'm like promoting Bouvet for all of a sudden for some reason. But when you go to Bouvet, like there's so there's like a, a sense of like calm and ease. Like they're like the waiters aren't overcompensating, like everyone's chill, like the place is chill. Mm. Oh really? Great. So see, whenever I've been, it's always been busy. I'm sure it's like dead fucking yeah. quiet now because yeah. no one's fucking coming there. Yeah, no, but, I, I went um, recently. I went, went about a month ago, and like, yeah, like it is busy, but there's not like a, I don't, I don't know. There's not a sense of like, oh, we gotta present ourselves a certain way because right, 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 yeah, like, yeah. Ugh, I'm like, I'm like eye rolling right now because I can't stand that. I can't stand that crowd. Oh, <laughs> oh I want to go to Bouvet. Yeah, I went last month with a friend of mine, um, and um, it was, like, not as busy. We went, we went during the day and a weekday, and mm. there's outdoor seating. And it's, like, limited limited seating, though, right? Obviously well, they, not they, do, they do outdoor seating, so it's, like... Oh, okay. Hard. Yeah, so they, they're, you know, it's not, um, it's it's not hard to get the table unless it's, like, I guess, after dinner. Um, mm-hmm. ugh, it was still, it was still... The same experience like it's not busy physically but like you still get the whole yeah. food is still great I had some cocktails. the cocktails were delicious oh. like, that's it that's good um but yeah i i liked that they, they they threw in that that element also because they're in san francisco and los angeles and like i feel like southern californians have this thing about no offense to californians but <laughs> um but they're a little bit frank <laughs> Yeah, it's like the what's the word? Um uh pretentious, pretentious? about about presentation. Yeah. Too much. Like that shit is too much. So I'm glad that they put that in there too, because I appreciated that. But um I am so happy. Okay. Yeah. Going over me right now. I have no idea why, but it's, it's, it's they're flying at a very low height. 
<laughs> is there an airport near you? <laughs> there was like an airbase like a few miles that way. Yeah. But anyway, that was a very low flying plane. Um, I can hear it, yeah. We never usually fly that low. I can hear like the muffle. Yes, it's a very low rub thing. <laughs> I can hear that. Um, I do have to say that I am so happy for Randall Park for having the opportunity to quote unquote punch Keanu Reeves. Oh my god. <laughs> because there's, I mean, I love Keanu Reeves. I love him. But to have that acting opportunity to like be able to have yeah, your character yeah. punch Keanu Reeves it's the greatest thing. That would be a really <laughs> hard thing to do though because isn't he like a really nice guy? He's so, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's, but I'm sure, like, I'm sure that experience must have been even, yeah, it's, it's, it must be hard to, like, punch him, but also satisfying at the same time. Right, no, but, like, Keanu Reeves is, like, known to be, like, a real, just, like, an all-around nice person. So, yeah. like, it must be, I mean, yes, while it's, it's appealing to just vent your anger on anyone, it yeah. must be especially hard to do it on, like, Keanu Reeves. Oh, totally, totally. I guess I meant like an <laughs> acting sense of like having. That oh, right, yeah, yeah. Not punching yeah. him. Oh my god, no. I yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't mean <laughs> like that. <laughs> or just even like you know, endowing that moment with like anger towards Keanu. That was like really that must be tough. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. also Randall Park doesn't look like he's a very aggressive human being. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although I do love the side note of like what's Leonardo DiCaprio doing for the environment. <laughs> she, and the girlfriend was like, he's doing, he's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The right yeah, was good. Yeah. It was good. It was a very it was a very, very good film. And there were like really great like there was, there was some really great dialogues that were like hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think I think like I said, for someone who does not like rom coms, because I think in rom coms it there's always a plug in for a dialogue that's supposed to be like funny, like oh this is this mm. is so it's supposed to be funny or like a moment where it's funny and it's always cringy for me. But I feel like in always be my maybe, they they were able to achieve that without being cringy. Mm. They had those they had a lot of those moments. I'm like, oh that actually is really funny. Like Mm. Um, so it was, it was nice to see that they 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 actually put some truth into it without mm. having to be without trying to be funny. And I think that's what yeah. made it funny because they weren't trying. No, totally. Yeah, totally. But yeah. But yes. So the second film that you watched, I didn't watch. Another round. Okay, what so another you? round is. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to give away too much because I do, I do want you to watch it because I do, I do want to, there's, ugh, I, I love this film. And uh. I do want to talk about it. Um, so another round, I, when I saw the description for what it was, like when I saw the log line, I thought it was just about, um, I thought it was just going to be about a guy who's older, who's like in his mm. 50s, who is trying to, relive his youth with his friends and alcohol is part of the element to that um so another round is a, a film from denmark and i think it won an award for like the Cannes festival or something I think it did, yeah yeah and um i honestly wasn't expecting much from this film but i ended up really falling in love with it because it was it was kind of like okay so you know how like nomadland was about people who just were just regular and ordinary and they weren't glamorous right. It was like that, like a piece of like life of from people that we forget about. Um, and it's about these four men who are teachers, and they test this uh, idea of um, consuming alcohol uh, and how geniuses would consume alcohol and create. I don't want to say create art. Like they were able to work and like write, you know, like um, and they were able to um hit a level of creativity. Yeah. That was beautiful, but without without having to delve into a dangerous level. Right. So sort of like microdosing. Yeah, yeah. Like the, one I think them their main um the person like 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 who they use as an example was Ernest Hemingway. Like he was able, he drank during the day from 
Monday through Friday and stopped at 8 p.m. and didn't drink on the weekends either. But he did it so he could um so he could write. But hmm. he wasn't he was always like at a, at a stable level, so to speak. Um, so they kind of wanted to test the idea. And the main character, like, the reason why it happened was that the main character opened up um, to his friends and was stating the fact that, like, he was having a hard time with his life. Like, he's boring. He's, you know, mundane. And um, it's affecting, like, his love life with his wife. And it's, it's affecting his teaching, everything. And then they kind of, like, get into this conversation about, like, what if we test this theory? Um, and what's interesting about the film was that they were able because when I first <laughs> when I was watching it and they were testing the theory I was like hmm this is not going to go very well because alcohol can get out of hand and yeah I'm someone I have to say like I love drinking I love alcohol I love I don't know like I I mean I only drink when I have a good time or just to like because to chill out but like I love drinking like I know there's mm. all these like misconceptions about drinking it's not good for your body it's not this whatever but like it's I don't know I have like I I love it so I was interested in the film but then I was scared that it was going to go off on a deep end but um the film was able to follow the good side effects to drinking alcohol and also the bad without it having to um spiral out of control well it kind of did spiral out of control but (laughs) um it was able to like go through all the levels of like you know that it can be good for you it can help you to boost confidence when you're working if you're presenting or if you're taking a test but also there is a level of alcoholism uh Mm. there is a moment where as human beings we can grow a habit and we can uh, consume alcohol too much without realizing that we develop this habit but also it can be good to socialize so like there's just all these levels that the movie just kind of touched upon um which was very smart because I know that there's like negative like I guess connotations about drinking alcohol which they touch upon too but there's also like good parts to it too so they were able to just I guess move around mm. all those topics in just one film yeah, because I'm looking at this now, and apparently it has a 92% um, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. So it does seem like it's a very good film, just based Which, on that. by the way, always be my maybe had 90%. So good film. <gasps> really? Just say, just say. Oh. I don't, just gotta throw it out there. You gotta watch the film. <laughs> yes, totally. Um, yeah, it does sound really here. interesting, Nudge. Although, you know, I, 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 I saw that Mance Michelson is in it, and... Um, I don't know. I can't. I. I think it's only because I've I've only ever seen him um, play sort of like shady characters. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. So that I think I, I, just based on that, I wasn't totally drawn to it. Even though he is, he is really good. He is very very good. Yeah, he starts off with like I'll, I'll say this like when he starts off. I wasn't interested in his character or him. I wasn't interested in him. Like, I'll I'll say it that way. But then seeing, like, what comes out of him and, like, what he does for his character, it is fascinating to watch. Mm. It Mm. is very fascinating. Um, And what's fascinating about this film is that these... They're they're all like four older men, you know, like grown men. So mm. like, and like I, I I I haven't watched like behind the scenes or any interviews, but I wonder like because they're they are four older men, even as not just actors but as people, like what they must have gone through this process of um, being in this film because they were all kind of opening up in different ways. Um, again, it's hard for me to talk about because you haven't seen the films. So I don't want to like give away certain yeah. things, but um, they were able to open up and just to be like fun and youthful. <sighs> um, and um, they were just I, I, like there were some. I think with their theory that they were testing, that these characters were testing, they were able to open up a, like a, a part of themselves where they were just living life. 
and enjoying like who they really were, like who they truthfully were. And mm. it, was, it was nice. It was interesting to watch because um, they're just yeah. more ordinary men in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> right. So just the, embracing the ordinary. Yeah. Um, no, I definitely will watch that because um, that does sound interesting. But uh, I mean, yeah, whenever, you know, Hulu works for me again. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> what are we watching next? Um, so, I don't even know. Um, I, I will tell you that the next two films that I do want to watch next, so this is like a side note, I, I stopped watching all Marvel and DC films at one point. Mm-hmm. I was an avid watcher. I was a huge fan of like all Marvel DC. Like when I say hardcore huge fan, like I was just like in it. But there was a time, and this was like around the same time that the first Wonder Woman came out and Batman with Ben Affleck came out. And also one of the um uh what's his name? Oh my god, I can't think of it right now. What's what's the Thor? One of the Thor films that came out. I think around that time those three films came out, I I I gave up on DC and Marvel because I felt like the films were just not not Wonder Woman, but like I felt like other DC and Marvel films were just so fixated on it was it was, it was just too much, you know, graphics and too yeah. much like I don't know, it was just too much like CGI and like I don't know, it was everything just seemed very external. Like I I am someone that likes to watch films and likes to be emotionally moved and like none of it was mm. working for me and I was getting so mm. annoyed that I just I, just I mean even it. the occasional Marvel film is like just because you don't have to think about it. Yeah, I can understand that. But <laughs> I think I think it started to bother me because I just wanted to see a hero film that was emotionally moving mm. and had depth had depth and I wasn't seeing it I just kind of stopped watching it altogether but I think (laughs) I think recently a lot of like any dialogue that I have with someone the two films that keeps coming up to me is like the um the Avengers movies I think Mm -hmm. it was like uh, Infinity and uh, Endgame and I keep being told repeatedly that I need to watch these films. And I'm like resisting. I'm like, I don't know. They just sound Have you not seen it yet? I have not seen it. Infinity or Endgame? No. I, I'm telling oh. you, I, like, I, I totally refuse to watch. Like, I think at some point I just completely refused. I was like, no. Wait, wait. How, how, do, you, do you have Disney Plus? Yeah, I have it. Right. So whilst i get that you you don't want to watch it but i would say watch it just for context and then watch wandavision oh okay because wandavision so clever so wonderfully written and it's amazing like it's really 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 good just like the format of it and 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 in terms of uh, the storytelling, it's a really, really, really great series. So watch Infinity War and Endgame just for context, mm-hmm. and then watch WandaVision, and then maybe, okay. and then maybe watch The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Okay, that's good to know because I actually, I actually watched WandaVision. I watched the, the first three episodes and I couldn't get past it. Yeah, um, because. Yeah. You, context yeah. okay yeah I, I think for me at the time i mean honestly honestly after my breakup i couldn't watch anything uh, right <laughs> you know and one division was like um re- recommended to me i watched it and by the third episode mm. i was like i'm done mm. um, but since you said that I, I think i will watch it yeah because um, i mean i mean obviously you said no I, I didn't realize you watched the first three episodes but even the first three episodes like it's just so clever like it is clever. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna knock on it or hate on it. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not hating on anything at all. Because I did watch the first three episodes and I was like, oh, like this is. Really- like, what is going on, right? Because you, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's it's it was interesting and clever what they were doing, but mm. I was just checked out. I'm like, mm, mm. no. Mm. 
I just couldn't. No, you, you, you need to watch Infinity um, War and Endgame to 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 for it to you know for a bit of context and for it to make sense. And um, and then once you've seen WandaVision, watch the like the making of because mm -hmm. that's also really interesting. Okay, so how about we do this? How about if I watch the movies first, and Game and Infinity War? Yeah. And you watch another round. Uh huh. And we could just talk about those three films. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I do. At some point, I do want to watch another animation because I do yes. like animation. Um, as long as not as long as it's not as gory as I Lost My Body because that was gory. Well, I, I wonder. So I I've been trying to catch up on Studio Ghibli films. Yes, there's only oh those two Studio Ghibli films. Yeah, I think so. After after the two Avengers films and um another round, yeah, uh, you can do Studio Ghibli because I'm trying to catch up because um I've watched so many films but not all of it and yeah. um I would like to. I love Studio Ghibli. I know there's a bunch of them on Netflix as well, so definitely yeah, yeah let's do it. I think Netflix does who I think Hulu has some too. Hmm. Um, like a recent. Well, I've, def movie. I've definitely seen Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. On Netflix. Oh. Um. So that one's on there. Oh, and my neighbor Totoro. Yeah. Is on there as well. Yeah. Uh, I think Howl's yes, Moving. I've seen it like fifteen times. <laughs> but yeah, let's go in that direction, and then yes, we'll go from there. definitely let's do that. Oh my god, this is gonna be exciting. Okay, now I'm excited. Now I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is actually so a friend of mine um a friend of mine tomo he has a podcast as well with two of his friends and they they mm. do the way that their podcast works is that they start off their podcast with um they review alcohol like they review beers so they, mm -hmm. i think for each podcast they'll each try like a new beer or a new like alcohol yeah, and then they review it, and then after that they review films. But I think the films that they touch upon is like mainly like Hollywood films. Mm. Um, and then I think the recent podcast was about Avengers, or the, one of the films that they watched was Avengers. And then mm. after listening to that, I saw a friend of mine who's also she's she also kind of stopped watching DC and Marvel, but she told me she's like Infinity War, you have to watch it, and I'm just like, all right, like. <laughs> Yeah. There's so many signs for me to watch these films. I'm like, all right, all right. I think I'll get back to it. Maybe, maybe mm. it won't be as, you know, bad. Um, not bad. Not, not, not bad. Yeah. Just, you know. It's just also because, like I said, it's, you don't have to think about it, and you just like yeah. it's just like for the spectacle. Um, but yeah, <laughs> great. So that's set. <laughs> Five minutes. All right. Cool. Amazing. Oh, well, so I will let you get back on with your day and I'm going to do my weekly ritual of ending our podcast and going to find food. Yes. Wait, what are you going <laughs> to eat? I need to know. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, there are some food in the fridge. I might have a bowl of cereal just because it's a really good cereal. So I can't find, my favorite cereal is like the Raisin Bran Crunch that you, that we, that you, that you get in, in America. But mm -hmm. I can't find that here. Like we don't have the specific like Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Like, yeah, we don't have that, uh, which really fucking sucks. So I found another Kellogg cereal, which is all I think it's called like All Bran, but it has like summer berries in it, mm -hmm. and it's got clusters similar to the Raisin Bran Crunch clusters. Yeah, but um, it's like even crunchier so i don't know but it doesn't have any raisins in it though. but um so it's even crunchier mm -hmm. um so i like it but i'm still like craving my raisin bran crunch it's interesting that raisin bran is like your favorite like i i like the crunch the clustered version i love it i love the clustered yeah. version okay that's what i would buy multiple boxes of those oh, um, okay. but just like regular raisin bran i'm like no Get oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. Okay, I'm thinking of the regular raisin bran. Like, you like that? <laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 there's Cluster. a raisin bran crunch, with, and and the cereal actually comes in like clusters. Uh, oh, that's and it's really good. good. Yeah. yeah, and then and what I used to do, which actually was like really bad, was like drizzle a little bit of um um maple syrup onto it as well. Okay, so it was like extra sweet. <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, oh no, maple syrup or honey, one or the other, yeah. or maybe, yeah, one or the other, just depending on my mood, but, um, but, uh, yeah, it was 
I do miss it. It's, so, it's interesting because I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a cereal person. Oh, really? See, yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge breakfast person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really care for breakfast, but I like cereal. I would eat cereal like before I go to bed. Mm, okay. It's like a midnight snack. Um, Sounds appropriate. But then also going to bed yeah. on the full stomach. Oh, best feeling ever. Oh, I'm the, I can't do it. Oh, I'm really? Just, I love it. Like, I just sleep. I just, eating, eating, and then going to bed <laughs> on the full stomach. Honestly, like, so, it's such a great, great yeah. feeling. I just feel great inside. So I just, I just, pa- I just pass right out. I, I can't, you know, it's fun. It's, I, you're not the first person that has told me that. For me, like if I sleep on a full stomach, my body is so overactive when it's when I'm mm. sleeping that like I end up having like crazy vivid dreams. I mean, I have vivid dreaming in general, but like when it's digesting food, I think it's worse. So I wake up, oh. I wake up feeling like that I haven't slept. Mm. <laughs> really? Okay, that's really day. interesting. I mean, it's fucking terrible for you. Like, I don't do it. <laughs> all the time but when i do do it i'm like oh this feels great um, um but that's really interesting you said because yes i mean when i was growing up like you know i was also told not to like eat before you sleep because you would have like nightmares or whatever mm-hmm. but then come to think of it that just made me think about whether i can actually remember my dreams or not i'm sure i'm dreaming but i actually I don't remember the last time I had that vivid a dream that I actually remembered it the next morning. I think I just sleep like I'm just like deep sleep. Yeah. Like the moment my head hits the pillow, I'm gone. Like REM. I want that problem. <laughs> you, I mean, are you not a he- heavy sleeper? Um, I am when I'm not on a full stomach. <laughs> um oh okay yeah i can be like if i have like you know i i am a heavy i am a heavy ish sleeper ish mm. it depends like if i if i eat if i have a full stomach and i go to bed no um if i drink alcohol like no like if my oh, yeah, like interesting. That, but- see the, the problem i have generally is keep it staying awake <laughs> like in bed like if mm-hmm. i'm in bed i'm just like you know, I try to like slowly wind down, but what often happens is I, I, whilst trying to slowly wind down in bed, I'm looking at my phone or whatever. Next thing I know, I'm out. Like next thing I know, wow. it's like five hours later. I'm like, oh, because like like for example, this morning, so I went to bed fairly late last night, like at like two, which is like my normal time anyway. I went to bed and I you know brush my teeth and everything, climb into bed, and I was like, oh, you know. Co- like wrap, wrap myself up in the in in, in the in, in the blanket and um get comfortable and i was just looking at my phone i was just quick youtube video whatever and um i had the lights all turned off so i was just looking at my phone in the dark and next thing i know i wake up and like there's light coming through the curtains and um <laughs> and and i'm like i wake up i'm like how did i get here <laughs> and uh, and I'm trying to look at, find out what the time is. And I'm like, where the fuck is my phone? So I'm like <laughs> looking for my phone. I can't find the phone. And then I like, I'm like, where the fuck is my phone? And <laughs> I find it under the bed because it fell out of my hand when I fell asleep. Um, oh my and God. it was like, and it was like 6 a.m. I was like, what just happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how did I, what? <laughs> yeah oh yeah so my problem is keeping awake <laughs> i do not have that problem at all. oh it's, I'm, the it's opposite. A, it's... I'm like i have a problem i have a problem trying to fall asleep but when i'm asleep i'm good but falling asleep i have to i don't know i think like my mind is overactive like i try to like work on that it's gotten better over the years for sure mm. um mm. but in order for me to really properly fall asleep i have to wear an eye mask Oh, really? Because it comes off at night, but, like, I have to wear it at least when I'm falling asleep. And, um... Interesting. Yeah, so, like, I... That's the only way I can, like, fall asleep. Unless, I mean, sometimes I don't really need it, but I have a hard time, like, 
falling asleep unless I have a very busy day and like, you know, if I, if I, have, a, if I have like a jam-packed day and I worked out or whatever, like I can fall asleep just fine. But um, yeah, overactive mind. <laughs> interesting okay yeah. well when i wake up in the morning it's like no when i finally fall asleep that's when i'm okay i can like have a deep sleep and it's fine and i wake up and i, I can like get up but falling asleep is like the hardest thing for me what i also do love though is like naps <laughs> i don't like naps <laughs> i love <laughs> A cat nap. Honestly, like the middle of the day, just a quick half an hour to two hour nap. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I say two hour because because I I usually oversleep. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't do naps, but That's I'm gonna okay. let you go because you need to eat. You need to eat your. I'm gonna go find some. Yeah, I'm gonna find probably I'll have I'll have cereal, but I'm gonna let you get on with the rest of your day because you only just started. But um. It was lovely seeing you again. Yeah. Your hands Take care. Hands I know. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'll see you again soon. And then we'll talk about our next movie. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to episode four. Our review on Nomadland, Always Be My Maybe, and Another Round. Stay tuned for episode five next week. And don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Instagram at darkbrownbykeisha. Bye.